Welcome to Insight. Today we are chatting with Tess Reynolds, Chief Executive Officer of New Door Ventures, which prepares youth for life and work. Tess has generously agreed to share some of her experience with us, and I thank you, Tess, for joining us today. Thanks for having me. So let's talk about disconnected youth. It's a very unusual term. So in general, it refers to transition age youth between 16 and 24 who are not working and not in school. So they're disconnected from the education and employment that they need to become independent adults. So we're talking about youth who go through their childhood experience, get into adolescence, go to, go to high school, uh, either have a successful or unsuccessful experience in high school, and then they step off of a cliff. Talk about what kind of experience those young people have and how you try to address it. Yeah, I mean, I think, Mark, first of all, I think we can agree that transitioning from childhood to adulthood is hard enough for any young person, right? Or even those who live in the best of families. So you can imagine that for a young person who has experienced homelessness or been in foster care or been involved in the justice system or dropped out of high school for whatever reason, it's extremely hard to gain employment, succeed at a job, and pursue further education. And what is their chance of becoming an independent, economically you know, self-sustaining adult if they don't have the very basics to attach to employment and education? And the kinds of behaviors, the kinds of challenges these young people have are, are quite diverse. Um, there, is, there are some behavioral issues. There's time management issues. There are some basic skills. Reading and, and uh, mathematics skills might not be up to snuff. So you have a whole range of different issues that these young people confront, not the least of which is their own day-to-day -day economic survival when they come into you. So talk about how that first encounter occurs with your organization. There are so many skills that need to be developed. But there's one thing we have working for us, which is the human motivation to work. I think human beings actually want to be productive. They want to contribute somehow, whether it is to their own family or to the community. And so we, we latch on to that motivation to work. So young people come to New Door after the age of 16, realizing that despite the barriers they have to employment, they want work, and they've heard of New Door, perhaps through a housing program, perhaps through a parole officer, perhaps through their own friends, or maybe some information session that we have had around the city, and they say, I want a job. And this organization, New Door, feels different than just going door to door downtown, giving an application. Because when they've tried to do that, they don't get a call back. Or even when they've been hired, they get fired pretty quickly because they don't have the skills. So what New Door offers is the chance for a real paid job, but it is an internship that is tightly coupled with other essential elements. Talk about those elements. So the first is training in work and life skills. We. Each young person goes through about 30 plus different workshops in work and life skills, time management, money management, but more importantly, communications. How do I leave a message? How do I talk to my supervisor about needing to change my shift? How do I talk to my coworkers or to customers? How do I ask for a raise in a constructive way? We go through all that kind of training in a very practical way that's relevant to these young people, but also bridging for them what employers need. And then um, in terms of the, the, the life skills and how the, the, that information is conveyed, it isn't just a lecture, is it? Oh, not at all. We don't believe in lecturing our young people. They're, they're practically adults, or they are young adults. and. Um, They've, they have had negative experiences of adults telling them what to do. Right. So we really are catalysts for their change, for helping them achieve the goals that they seek for themselves. 
So our workshops are very much geared towards a learning environment, different modes of learning, but not just learning from our curriculum, learning from each other as well. So when we do a workshop, everything is handwritten and conversational. And when it doesn't come out of the young people, then our staff might go and add a few more elements that are in our curriculum. And it feels very organic. And young people really feel like they have a say in how they learn. Plus, the internships um, uh, is actually the practical translation of whatever you're learning in the class in this in this uh, instructional environment as Absolutely. well. Absolutely, yeah. So ours is a um, three-month program. They start with two weeks in the classroom, and then they go to work. And when they go to work, they are required to come back once a week for workshops. So while they are working, they're coming back, meeting with their groups, their cohorts, and, and sharing, hey, what went well this week? What was hard this week? And when their honeymoon is over, after about four or five weeks, they all get to talk about, so do you feel like sticking it out or do you feel like quitting? So the learning really goes through the same experience. And then we start by the third month, we say, time to get ready for the next job because this was never a permanent job. This was a chance to succeed at the first job so that you can get subsequent many jobs out there in the marketplace, and particularly when you reattach to school, when you go to college, you will need work to pay for rent and food. So once you have uh, taken someone in to, to the program, Talk about what kind of support that you provide, and, and you, you, you provide the internship, but you start off with your training, and you're dealing with certain skills, how to dress, how to interact with people, those skills are broken down. You provide the internship. Talk about how it progresses from there. The internship unfolds after the skills training. How does that, how does that work? We really see four ingredients coming together, Mark. So there is that paid job internship where they're learning on the job, hard skills and soft skills, while they're getting paid. They get a performance review also, by the way. Then we have other skills training done at New Door through workshops where they learn in a small group. They learn from each other as much as they learn from our curriculum. And those cover a wide range of topics, right? From communication skills to managing your time, managing money, managing conflict. And then resume, uh, developing a strong resume, having interviewing skills where they're actually videotaped and they can critique themselves. All of this, they know that the arc is to get the next job and to also figure out what education is needed to have long-term jobs. So the third ingredient is education supports. How do we help them get back on track? Maybe they need a GED. And so we have a GED program where they can enroll in parallel to earn that, that high school credential or diploma. Or if they're already enrolled somewhere, we might match them with a tutor to make sure they pass their math classes at City College, for instance. So education supports based on where they are and how to accelerate them to attach to higher education. And finally, perhaps the most important, it's one-on-one -on -one case management. It's that deeply personal walk between a young person and a healthy, mature, responsible adult whom they may not have had in their past lives, who can walk with them every week for two to three hours and say, OK, where are you? Where do you want to go? How do we break this down into smaller goals where we can help you achieve forward steps one by one until you, you get to your goal? So once they have gone through the, the training program, the internships, and so on, what happens then? After a young person completes a new door internship, over 80% of them find jobs or attach to further education right away. And six months later, between 90 and 95% are still working or in school or both. They are now on a solid path to become employable in their adult life. And all that time, 
even two years later, five years later, 10 years later, they are welcome to come back to New Door. At a minimum, we always have family time at Thanksgiving. Young people come back sometimes with their babies or their spouses, and they have a massive Thanksgiving feast with us. We feed at least 150 people every year. And that's just family time. But they also come back for more help. Uh, they, they might go back to their case manager or some of the other staff who, who they worked with, um, might have taught them a workshop. And now they're, they're moving from a two-year college to a four-year college. And they need references, or they need advice, or help with the application form. Or sometimes, beautiful thing, they need help filling out tax returns. And I say, that's terrific. You get to pay taxes because you're earning income. <laughs> and now part of a community that is supportive, that is positive, uh, that also offers them an opportunity to help others. Absolutely. Tess Reynolds, thank you so much for uh, sharing with us the work of New Door Ventures, and thank you so much for your insights. Well, thanks for having me, Mark.